Hi, my name is Alex Disabella, and this is a mock interview for humanities teaching position at St. Thomas More Academy in Raleigh, North Carolina. Do you have your resume and cover letter with you? I do. All right. So why don't you start by telling me about yourself? So I just graduated from Franciscan University in Steubenville, Ohio, with a degree in education and English, and my concentration was British and American literature. I am also from a small town in Pennsylvania, so when I decided to go to school, it was a big move, but I was okay with that. Sounds good. All right. Why do you think we should consider you for this position? I have always loved teaching from a young age. I knew I wanted to be a teacher, and after looking into the school a little bit on your website and just going through college in general, it became all the more clear that I am made to be a teacher. Sounds good. So what qualities are you looking for in a job? Something stable, stable pay, uh, a, com a community of teachers that understands that all teachers teach differently, all students learn differently. All right. What do you believe your greatest strength is? My greatest strength is probably my dedication to teaching and looking at the different ways students learn. I did a lot of research for my thesis on this topic specifically because I knew I wanted to incorporate it into my own classroom when the time came. So I feel like I've prepared myself in that area and I'm pretty confident in my knowledge of teaching to a dyslexic learner and it opened a world of possibilities to teaching students with differing disabilities in the general education classroom setting. All right. And what about your greatest weakness? I would say my greatest weakness is comparing myself to others. It was something I found myself doing a lot in college, basically just seeing where other educators or college students are in their own lives and comparing that to myself and not feeling confident in my own position. But as I've gotten older and reflected back on those de decisions and thoughts, I realized that I don't really know what they went through or how they got there. So I just have to focus on myself and my own journey. Okay. And this is kind of a funny question, but if you were an animal, what kind of an animal would you be and why? A very interesting question. I would say not necessarily an animal, but an insect maybe. I would say an ant because obviously they're team players. They work as a cohesive unit, but they're also very hardworking. And I feel like both of those characteristics are applicable to me. Okay. And are you at all willing to continue your education? And if so, in what fields? I would absolutely love to continue my education. It was a thought I had when I entered college as an undergrad. I knew that I wanted to do more research, look into more complex ideas. I would love to get my master's in both education and English, and then furthermore, get my doctorate because I would love to move into the more administrative side of things after having maybe 10 years teaching under my belt. So why do you want this particular job? Originally, this position was made known to me through an email from various professors. And at first I wasn't thrilled because it's far from my hometown. I would be far from family. But then as I started looking into the school and seeing the Catholic values their classical focus, that it's a college preparatory school with more individualized and unique classroom types and classroom topics, I thought it would be a great opportunity. And I'm more open to moving a farther distance because I went to school quite far from where I'm from. So I've gotten used to that whole aspect. And like I said, looking at the website and seeing the community of teachers and even the community of students reflected on that website, it was great to see, especially because my own high school experience wasn't necessarily like that, which taught me a lot about how I would like to move forward in my professional career. Okay. And a hypothetical question, if you knew that a coworker was doing something unethical, how would you respond? It would really depend on the situation. If it was something that was in generally a gray area, I might approach the coworker, maybe find out why they would have done something a specific way. But if it was blatantly unethical, I would immediately report it. Obviously, in the other situation, I would also then report it after speaking with the coworker. Okay. Now, why don't you tell me about the toughest decision you've had to make in the past six to 12 months? Well, as a junior in college, I was in a really bad car accident. And while I wasn't physically hurt, it did emotionally hurt me. So I had to spend some time at home and I had to make the decision to come back to school because it was at a point in the semester where 
I was kind of being pushed to drop, but I wanted to continue my studies because I knew I wanted to graduate on time. And thankfully, the university was very accepting of this decision and helped me through that. But it was a very tough decision at the time. All right. And what are some of your favorite activities outside of work? Outside of work, I know it sounds cliche as an English major, but I do absolutely love reading and writing. It's a passion. I can also be found hiking. I love to hike. I love to knit, um, something my mother does a lot, and she kind of passed that down to me. I also love to bake and cook. Sounds good. Why did you decide to be a teacher? When I was in first grade, I tutored an autistic student who was in my first grade class. And from that point, I knew it was something I wanted to do. And while that was special education, I took the approach through general education to teach to the specialized learner. Uh, It was something that has stuck in my mind since I'm seven. So it definitely was a marker in my history that was something I knew I wanted to do. Okay. What type of classroom management structure would you implement if you were hired? Something I find a lot in my experience in a classroom setting is, especially in high school, there's kind of a, they're torn between lecturing and doing act, more activity and project based. So my approach would be to combine the two. I think in high school, you need more of that activity, working in groups kind of approach to learning because lecturing, they're teenagers it's boring if it's a straight lecture. I didn't like lectures in high school. I would have preferred more projects and more collaborative learning. So that is definitely something that I would do. Also physically structuring the classroom. The traditional classroom is the teacher's desk in the front, blackboard behind the desk, and then all of the students' desks facing the teacher desk. I would want to switch things up a bit because I believe in a debate style classroom. So I would position the desks along each wall on the sides facing each other in the middle and maybe have a debate table in the middle and have a teacher desk at the front and the back. So it establishes movement. Students can see each other clearly. They can have conversations about important topics culturally, historically, in the literature realm, combining everything together. I think that's the kind of environment that I would want my classroom to be. Okay, and how have you used or how will you use technology in the classroom? So going to college in an age where teaching is very much more technology-based than it was when I was in school. I would incorporate both. I obviously would still lean more towards books, but technology is very important because students are growing up with technology in their homes. It's a part of their own culture. So I would use more creative sites. For example, Canva, you can make posters. That's something you can incorporate into various English or literature lessons. I would use Storyboard That. It's a comic strip making website. So that also involves the creative genius, but it's also using technology. You can base it in something that's more literature based, like Romeo and Juliet was an example that I've used in the past. I would also use PowerPoints as opposed to a lecture style because students need a visual aid. I need a visual aid. And then also making videos is something that I've done in my own education experience. I've taught that way. So I would also incorporate that into my own classroom as well as websites. I think it's important for a class to have their own creative network. So I would incorporate a classroom website that would also involve parents into that situation because it creates this community where everyone's involved in the education process. What is your teaching philosophy? My philosophy is that every student can accomplish something in the classroom, regardless of their level of learning, how much learning they've had in the past. Not everyone has to be on the same level at the same stage within one classroom. Therefore, I would universalize instruction and differentiate it at the same time because it's apparent that all students learn in a different way. Not everyone can grasp language the same way. Not everyone can grasp literature the same way. So that is definitely the approach that I would be taking. Okay. How will you motivate parents to become involved in the classroom and in their child's education? One thing that I think is very important is parental inclusion in the classroom setting, whether that's through a website, like I said before, giving parents access to that website because students' work would be posted there. They would obviously have to be informed of that. 
I would also send out a weekly newsletter. That was something that I never had in high school. And while I was a diligent student, I would have preferred that because I think it's important for students to have that understanding that their parent knows that they're doing a good job in the classroom or that their parent is informed of something that's not going well in the classroom. So I would do a weekly newsletter, website, and then conferencing. Parent-teacher conferences are important. So every once in a while, parent-teacher conference as school needed or if it's required because of the student in the classroom doing something. Okay. What ways do you assess and evaluate students? I am a big fan of inquiry-based assessments. So for example, in a lesson, if I'm teaching a concept, I'm constantly asking questions to affirm that students understand the concepts that I am displaying. I also, I'm not a fan of huge tests, and I know states, like standardized testing is very important in the public school system and any school system. However, I would try to incorporate standardized test concepts within a quiz format because quizzes are shorter. Not everything has to be a lengthy test, especially if I'm going to be doing project-based and paper-based. I think a quiz is ample amount of assessment on a student's progress. I would also conference with the students, build a rapport, find out where they're struggling, where they're progressing, things like that. Okay. How will you meet the needs of students in your class who may be advanced or say that they're bored? Something that I think is important is differentiating instruction. So that means aligning assignments to different learning needs. So some, if I'm teaching a lesson on grammar, some worksheet, like if I'm using a worksheet format, some might be a little more advanced than others, but everyone gets the same assign, the same type of assignment, the same type of grading scale, but they're a little different. And if the student does, in fact, come to me and say that they're bored, I would always have extra things on hand for that student to do, whether that be hands-on, reading, more worksheets, anything in the classroom that I can think of. How will you motivate students who seem uninterested in learning or are unwilling to participate in class? Getting to know your students is key. I think building rapport with every student you have in your class is important. So at the beginning of every school year or every semester, depending on how the class works, I would have an index card. Most teachers do this. You have an index card and you have students fill out characteristics about themselves, what they like, what they're interested in, and then that will help you start conversations. I think that's super important. I would also have an inviting classroom environment. English can be very intimidating, especially if it's writing based or if it's strictly reading based. So I'd make that environment very welcoming. And I would also personalize my instruction, like I said before, and simply talking to students, even if it's after class or during class or during a break, that can be that breakthrough idea that helps you create a lesson that they're going to want to learn. Okay, what activities, clubs, or sports would you be willing to sponsor if you're offered a position? Because I'm an English teacher, I would be I would lean more towards book clubs, drama, debate, but I would be open to anything sports. I did play softball in high school, so I would be open to that. Really, any, I'm kind of an open book, so I would be open to anything. Okay. What three words would your peers, administrators, or students use to describe you? I would say creative. I did, I do spend a lot of time making lessons and making sure that they're not the traditional type of lecture styles. I would say creative, hardworking. I do put a lot of time into creating things for students. And I would also say motivated. I'm very motivated in this career field. I do. I truly love it. All right. And so that's about all I had for you. Do you have any questions for me? Um, I do, actually. How would you describe the school's culture? I would say it's a very open culture that Everyone gets along for the most part. We have a pretty low turnover rate. Um, it's just overall a nice place to work. That's great to hear. How how supportive is the district of continuing education for faculty? I know you asked me that question, but I was wondering how that would work if I worked for the school district. I think you'll find that our school district is particularly supportive. We do really encourage involvement in the classroom from everyone who wants to be involved. Okay.
And then one last question I had, I did talk about including parents in my education process in the education community. So do you have an active PTA group? Yes, we do. Great to hear. Well, thank you so much for your time. Yes, thank you for coming. I appreciate it.